tests that orthopedic surgeon should think about. MRSA screening and decolonization. Is this patient a MRSA carrier? Should we screen this patient for MRSA? Strategy for prevention of surgical site infection will include optimization of the patient before surgery. Make sure the patient is nutritionally fit. You need to deal with the smoking issue, the diabetes, overweight patients. And you need to improve the skin and the soft tissue condition, the area where you're going to make the incision. Another area that's important is to try to reduce the bacterial burden that the patient is carrying. Immediately before the surgery, you will give the patient prophylactic preoperative antibiotics, and you will try to decrease the contamination in the operating room. About 80% of the organisms that infect the patients are brought to the operating room by the patient themselves. That can be methicillin-sensitive staff or methicillin-resistant staff. It can be MESA or MRSA carriers. If you identify these patients that are carriers and treat them before they go to the hospital, that will reduce the infection rate for these patients. Once these patients are in the hospital, we spread this bacteria to other patients. That's why hand hygiene is important. Proper hand washing is important. So how can we change that? How can we decrease that bacterial burden that the patient has on them? Because the patient is bringing these bacteria to the hospital, to the operating room. So what are the tests that we should do? How can we help that situation when the patient is in the clinic or in the office? Do screening for MESA or MRSA and then do decolonization. Some patients have large reservoirs of bacteria and they are called carriers. And these are the patients that will have an increased risk of surgical site infection. These reservoirs are in the nose, the axilla, the groin, and the perianal area. You want to identify them. You want to eradicate the bacteria so you can decrease the risk of surgical site infection. Being a carrier will increase the chances of infection. The chances is about 10 times more risk for surgical site infection if the patient is MRSA carrier. You wouldn't know they are carriers unless you test them. It is important to identify these MRSA carriers so we can give them the proper antibiotics such as vancomycin. So what is a carrier? A carrier is the one that can spread the bacteria without necessarily becoming ill. About 2% of the population are MRSA carriers. MRSA is a contagious bacteria and it is difficult to treat because it's resistant to most commonly used antibiotics. What makes the MRSA resistant? In the bacteria cell wall, we have a penicillin binding protein. When the penicillin is able to bind to the binding protein of the cell wall, it causes disruption of the cell wall and the bacteria. However, if the staph aureus acquires the MECA gene, then it can alter the penicillin binding protein, making the bacteria resistant to all penicillins. People carry this MRSA harmlessly, and they don't even know they are carrying it. The primary way of transmitting MRSA is through direct contact from another person, an object, 
that has it or from a sneeze droplet of an infected person. 30% of staph bacteria lives in the nose. 25 to 30% of the population is colonized with staph. Means the bacteria are present but not causing an infection with staph. The odd ratio is six times if you are a MRSA carrier that you will get infection and 10 times if you are a MRSA carrier. MRSA carriers are diagnosed by examining a swab or a culture of the nose. You need to identify these patients before you bring them to the hospital and you want to eradicate the organisms or you want to do decolonization by using 2 to 4% chlorohexidine bath for 5 days. The patient should leave the chlorohexidine on the surface of the skin. It works better if kept on for a longer time, so it is better not to wash it off. And 2% nasal mupressin BID for 5 days. It is a nasal antibiotic ointment. By the screening and eradication program, you can drop the infection rate by about 40 to 60 percent or more, depending on the compliance of the patient. Our institution showed that empiric treatment is less costly than a staph aureus screening and decolonization in total joint arthroplasty patients. They used preoperative empiric biopresent treatment for all total joint arthroplasty patients. And they find that the cost is much less than the cost of a standard screening and decolonization of the staph. They find that the empiric treatment allows for more efficient workflow without compromising the patient. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.